Jacobson. Uh, I'm from Netflix. Uh, I head up the API team there. Today I'm going to talk primarily about internal audiences and APIs. Um, I'm also going to harken back to my earlier days. Uh, about a year ago I joined Netflix. Prior to that I was at NPR. Um, I headed up the tech group there. And among other things, I, I launched the API. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but primarily focus on Netflix. So starting with NPR, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the API program and the distribution of audiences relative to the API. Um, so on the left over here, um, those are the total number of API keys um, distributed by audience. Um, so what you can see there is overwhelmingly the distribution of of those keys is going to the public developer community. And a small sliver of that is going to the internal NPR um, uh, developers. And a slightly bigger portion of that is going to you know, member stations and some other partners. Um, but on the right side, you can see that overwhelmingly the consumption is pretty much the reverse. Um, NPR is dramatically um, taking up the majority of the, uh, the requests. And so just to talk a little bit about what that means, there are a bunch of these kinds of apps that are out there in the marketplace that uh, third-party developers have built put together. Those are representing the left side, the overwhelming number of keys. And the overwhelming percentage of consumption is done by uh, NPR's website, the player, uh, mobile devices, and things like that. So this is really a case where um, the API at NPR was um, pretty much fueling the overall digi digital strategy, and then it was an offshoot um, exposing this stuff publicly so that other people can do some interesting things with it. But the interesting things are really a small percentage of the overall value proposition. So similarly, if you look at Netflix, um, the distribution is pretty much the same. Uh, two differences. One, the numbers are overall bigger, uh, so more traffic coming into Netflix. And also the distribution is much more dramatic. Um, so clearly, uh, Netflix is overwhelmingly taking up uh, the majority of the requests. The actual distribution is about 99.7% from internal use and 0.3% from the public. So the Netflix API launched as a public developer community uh, API, and that was the entire purpose. Um, so that's that 0.3 today, but at one point it was pretty much 100%. Um, and then over time it evolved to be more of a, an internal strategy where we have hundreds of devices, mobile devices, um, Wi-Fi enabled TVs, consoles, et cetera, all running off of this. And the public API is now representing still that small percent, but still a consumer of it overall. So how does this translate into, translate into uh, overall value proposition? Um, for NPR, over a year span, um, what we saw was 100% page view growth across all the platforms in that year. 80% um, of that overall growth was done through mobile development and, and those kinds of um, uh, apps um, internally consumed. A very, again, very small percentage of that growth is public developer stuff. Um, similarly, with Netflix, this kind of tra um, overall traffic increase going from less than 1 billion requests per month to today more than 1 billion requests per day um, that kind of dramatic increase is also um, a result of internal leveraging of the APIs. So what does all this mean? I mean, these are all interesting metrics. Um, I like to equate it to an iceberg where that part at the top, the little chunk that is highly visible above the water is really the public API world. It represents a small portion of it, but it's also highly visible. It's the kind of stuff that you can learn about other companies. Twitter has a public API, Facebook, Netflix, NPR, all these companies know about it, or have it, you know about it through there. But the reality is that the big mass underneath the water is really representing the overwhelming traffic for many of these companies, not all. But um, that is a trend, and with these two particular companies I've been at, that is absolutely the case. So understanding your audience is key to, um, to the overall API strategy. Some companies are going to have a, an audience that is very much public, um, and you're going to want to leverage that. For these two companies, very much an internal consumption model. So what that really translates into is um, understanding how you need to design your organization to support those audiences and the API, which is going to support them. Understanding how to design the API to meet their needs. How to, uh, understanding how to re, um, allocate resources to support all of that, um, and, and things like that. So. 
understanding your audience is really the first step, and then all these things cascade from there. For Netflix, going back to this, very clearly our audience, our key audience, um, is going to be our internal consumption, our device partners, and our internal developers. So those developers, they build these uh, devices. We have a bunch of internal teams who are either directly managing these partners or they're actually developing the UIs for these devices. And the way that our entire organization is structured is that we have a whole bunch of different engineering teams who specialize in different things. Some of those engineering teams are specialized on presentation layer. Some of them are specialized on metadata and algorithmic output and the kinds of material that is used in order to uh, create a, a great UI experience on these devices. And sitting in the middle is my team, the API team. And essentially, this is what it looks like. Um, we are consuming from all these sources, and we're piping it all out to all these devices. And so, as you can see here, the organizational structure is kind of a cornerstone to the way that we operate as an engineering team. And I would say that very much um, the API is core to the overall DNA of the engineering culture within Netflix. And that's a really important facet when you're understanding who the audience is, make sure that you understand where the API is positioned within the org accordingly. So again, the, uh, the Netflix API as it currently stands today was originally founded in the Thousand Flowers model where you know, the public developers. Um, that is the current design of that API, and I mentioned that it's no longer the primary audience. So what we're doing is we're revisiting that question and saying, how can we redesign our API so that it um, better serves the constituents that are most important to us? So basically, today's API is no longer the right tool for the job. So when we look at the key goals of this redesign, what we're going to do is we're going to try to optimize for performance for these devices which includes reduction of overall transactions, because that's the most expensive thing as you're uh, interacting across the web, and reducing payload size and just trying to streamline this though, that, so we can improve overall performance. And then the other thing is to improve overall innovation speed so that we can put the, hand, uh, put the power in the hands of our UI teams so they can better, um, better innovate more quickly without us being a dependency blocking them for certain, certain things. So going back to our overall growth chart, tremendous growth. Um, what we're seeing there is you know, 37 times, I think, was the number over the span of an 18-month span. Um, billion requests a day. Sounds great, right? Everyone super impressed with the number, right? But we're not. Um, and so if you think about uh, NPR, going back to them as a, um, a website provider, among other things, um, a billion would be a tremendous achievement. They would love to have a billion page views per month or per day or per year probably. Um, and they would want that because of ad impressions. Um, so if you have a billion page views, you're getting a billion ad impressions, which converts into dollars and you know it, it adds to the bottom line, and that's a great model. The problem with APIs is that the output looks like this or like this, and you can't really monetize it in the same way. And so having this degree of... Um, of traffic increase doesn't actually increase revenue. What it does is increase cost. So what we really want to do is we want to revisit that. We want to look at improving the overall transactions between the, uh, the client apps and the Netflix API. And we want to get more to this model of, you know, could it have been 100 million instead of a billion? Um, could it have been less than that or at least less than a billion? We know we can do that. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to create all kinds of improvements in our um, overall server infrastructure needs, um, the kind of staff and, and total number of hours dedicated towards maintaining those servers, things like that. And, and hopefully the result will be improved performance. One of the common themes that we have um, as we consider this redesign is actually abandoning REST, which is probably not a common route and may, may not be um, the wise choice for many, but for us we are looking at a different way to decrease the overall network transaction costs. So our current model is we have a bunch of those client apps. We have a bunch of these API resources. Um, we need to get that data to those devices. And the current model is essentially they, in a very synchronous manner, request one thing after the next and draw it across the HTTP wire, which is that line there. And each of those transactions add up. It might be a couple hundred milliseconds each, 
whatever it is, but they add up and that basically slows things down. So our new model is going to uh, this custom tier where in essence uh, the devices will make one transaction across the wire and then make a couple transactions that are maybe uh, dependent on each other and then a bunch of asynchronous calls to just go out and fetch data. Each of, which, each of these lines is probably going to be in the, in the order of maybe 10 milliseconds and then deliver it back across the wire. So we're looking at really collapsing the overall um, time required in order to get the data and deliver it back. And there are a lot of benefits to this uh, custom endpoint model, all of which are on that sheet of paper there that I can't remember. You want to throw it over here? <laughs> Um, so uh, things like the ideal state is one network transaction as opposed to 15 or 20 or however many are needed. Um, we want to have dynamic ability for the UI teams to update this. So having this isolated scripting tier enables all the UI teams independently of our development cycles to get this stuff up and live and innovate re very rapidly, do A-B tests and things like that. Um, we will have very targeted payloads, so byte counts will be substantially lower. Um, we'll allow for custom uh, formatting, so some of our device partners have very proprietary XML structures. Some of them have JSON hierarchical or flattened JSON models. And having this ability at the scripting tier gives each of the UI teams the ability to tailor exactly what they want um, for their specific device. Um, so ultimately, um, this is one of John Musser's slides. Um, this is his API Billionaires Club. We're on it. Um, but really our goal is to not be on it. Uh, so we're trying to eliminate ourselves from there. <laughs> well, we want to get there by other means, like overall growth of the company, not chattiness. Um, and so the goal there, you know, the underlying goal is really that we want the API and the overall interaction between the devices and our API to be much faster, which will result in happier customers. That's it. Great.